So fundamental factor models. Again, factor models are a linear combination of factors and they're used to model the returns of an asset. The asset could be your algorithm, right? The thing that is important here is this return stream can be anything. And people often ask, well, how do you how do you decide whether or not our algorithms are good for the fund or the contest without looking at our algorithm? Well, all of this only requires a return stream. Um, and so you can do a tremendous amount of interesting stuff looking at exposures. You can look at what sectors you're exposed to using factor modeling like this, right? You can say, my factors are the returns of each sector. And so you can figure out like, is a strategy heavily invested in one sector and not another. You can do a tremendous amount of stuff. That's not all we do, but it's it's definitely a part of what we do. Um, so it's very useful. And remember, you in research can get the return stream of your algorithm by importing backtest, the get backtest function. And uh, PyFolio, which was recently released on the forums, is basically has a ton of tools to allow you to do this. Um, also, the tear sheet does this, the algo tear sheet, which is also available on the forums. And it has a ton of tools to uh, allow you to analyze your return streams on your algorithm um, and figure out like, you know, whether they're good, they're bad, are they exposed to this, exposed to that, when do they do poorly, et cetera. So um, let's say that we want to model something using fundamental factors, okay? So rather than like the returns on the market and the returns on uh, the risk-free rate, we want to model using like, uh, let's see, uh, book to price ratio and market cap, which are the two FAMA French fundamental factors. Well, the way that you do that is you uh, construct a portfolio uh, on the market using those factors. So you rank all the assets on the market by the factor, and then you do the long short thing where you long the top percent, short the bottom 30 per the bottom percent. And FAMA French, I think it's 30 top, 30 bottom. And you say, what returns would I get on this portfolio? And then those are the returns of that factor, right? So the reason for this is because it becomes market neutral. You're canceling out the market returns. You're just looking at the factors returns. And it allows you to look at a return stream based on a factor. So a good way to do factor modeling is rather than like put the raw value of the factor into the model itself, which you can do. Again, you can just normalize it uh, using a z-score. Again, the z-score is current value minus mean value over standard deviation. Um, so you could normalize it, or you could construct these por portfolios. And constructing the portfolios is kind of the given way to do it in academia right now. So the FAMA French factors are um, market returns minus risk-free rate is one factor. And then the next one is returns on a market cap-based portfolio. And then the next one is returns on a book-to-price uh, book value yield portfolio. So we'll construct those two portfolios here and you can see the first one is factor is just um, those that are at the top, those that are at the bottom, those that are at the top minus those that are at the bottom and you get the returns and then you can start saying, okay, how is any return stream exposed to these factors? So for instance, we'll look at um, the AA asset, um, Al Alcoa, and uh, our third factor is just going to be the bench returns minus the risk-free rate, the treasury returns, which again, we'll use the SPY and the bill ETFs as proxies. So let's do the linear regression. And you can see, um, historically, over the last time period, we ran the regression. Uh, Alcoa is exposed. The beta to the market cap is 0.62, and the beta to the book-to-price factor is 0.5. So this is interesting, right? Because it allows you to start saying, where are the returns on my asset coming from? Where are the returns on my return stream coming from, right? And um, then the other thing you can do is, again, a rolling analysis to see how the exposures change over time. Because again, if you're saying, historically the exposures have been this, that's fine, but what you're really interested in is like, what will the exposures be tomorrow, right? Because you can say, historically, my algorithm has been exposed tied to small cap stocks and not very exposed to large cap stocks. But is that going to hold true tomorrow? Right? And, and so the only way to know whether it would hold true tomorrow is, is you have to look at the consistency. Because if you're making a prediction based on data that's very inconsistent, that prediction is unlikely to be good. Um, so uh, 
this is what the exposures over time look like to the three fam of French factors. And this is all manually computed in the notebook, um, just to give you an idea of like the flexibility here. Uh, and so you can see like, is this, is this reasonable? Are you okay with these exposures? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. The important point is just to, you know, know what the exposures are and be aware of how they change over time. Because this is interesting that it used to be exposed to F3, which was, um, F3 is the market. So the, it had a high exposure to the market and then it stopped having a high exposure to the market. Well, actually it went down to about one. So it used to have an exposure of 1.5, which means it was about 1.5 times the market in terms of volatility. Uh, and then it reduced. And like, why did that happen? Why did it go up down from a 1.5 beta to a one beta stock? I don't know, but it's an interesting observation that you can make looking at these exposures over time. Um, and then the other way to do factor modeling is like I said, using a Z-score. Uh, so again, you can use, you can put in anything here and it will be normalized to a Z-score, which deviates from zero depending on whether it's especially high or low, right? Um, now the important thing is that you can't assume that it's normally distributed. Some people might assume that it's normally distributed and that 99% of the values will lie between negative three and three once you normalize to a Z-score. That's only true of your underlying factor is also normally distributed. So uh, I'll show in the risk exposure notebook, in case you guys don't remember, shark bear test, it tells you if something is normally distributed, and then you can decide whether or not, um, assuming that it will be between negative three and three with 99% probability is reasonable. But either way, that doesn't affect the fact that you can normalize anything. Um, and then uh, you don't, even if it's not normal, that's fine. You just can't assume things about how often it will be between certain certain values. So again, what we'll do here is we will um, do the basically the same analysis. I'm not going to go into it too much, but the same analysis, but just doing a, a normalized using these this factor of normalization. And again, the important thing here is that the idea is that you can use these factor models to create these ranking systems for long short equity strategies. Um, and this is, again, the idea would be that you develop a better factor model, better factors, maybe slightly more efficient, swap it in for the current factor model in a long short equity strategy. You don't have to do anything else. Like the rest of the strategy is there. You don't have to worry about like execution or like tricky things. It's, it's a fairly easy strategy once you have the, the ranking system. And the ranking system is where all the magic happens. And again, um, you can uh, evaluate the quality of a ranking system uh, using Spearman rank correlation. And we talk about that in the Spearman rank correlation lecture, which is on the lectures page. So that's the idea of using fundamental factors. And again, once you get the idea of factor modeling, this is literally just swapping in a fundamental value for one of these factors. Fama French is a really common one, um, but you can put in anything you want. Again, we have all those, those fundamental data go crazy, create new factors, right? Like people do that all the time. They create new factors based on things that they think are interesting. And we're going to release a factor modeling API uh, in the, I, I don't wanna give an exact date, but we're working on it right now. So um, definitely, I think as soon as we release that, I'm gonna be very excited to show you some examples of running algorithms that use factor modeling. Uh, and we'll try, to, we'll, we'll try to get that out for you as soon as possible.